hello and welcome to our inaugural Q&A and Office Hours live stream. My name's Ramon, lovely to meet you. I am so eager to tell y'all about what we've got coming and answer a couple of the questions you might have. First things first, um, if you have any questions, please do stay muted so that we can record this and drop your questions into the general channel here on Discord. If you're watching this later on YouTube, come join our Discord channel. All right, the link will appear magically below me or in the, <laughs> in the video description. We'll figure it out. But yeah, let's tell you about build ships. You might have already seen it. If not, hey, this is an exciting announcement because build ship is as of today in private beta. And what it is is a fully managed experience to instantly create and deploy any backend task for your apps. So we're taking the best of the low code and the no code worlds and expanding on what we've learned by building other tools to make building your own backend solutions as complex as they might be as easy as a few clicks. So forget about waiting a long time for your builds to complete or use, and we can use AI to generate any idea, any node, any workflow you might think of. You can do it with AI. Of course, we've got tons of integrations with existing database solutions like Firebase or Supabase or Postgres. And as said, integrate with the solutions of your choice. BuildShip is currently in private beta. You've got the link there, buildship.com. You can come and sign up to get early access. And we'd love for you to try it out and give us some feedback, please. Public beta is going to start as early as next week as well. That's enough of me rambling. I'm going to let actually... My dear colleague here, how do you take over? And she is going to give you a detailed tour of BuildShip. But as I said, drop any questions you have, please, into the general channel in the chat. I'll be keeping an eye. And then after this demo, I'll ask those questions to Harini and answer anything else that y'all might, might have. Take it away, Harini. All right. Excited to be here. First, to give a product walkthrough of what it can do talk a bit about like some of the examples and demo use cases, and then we'll open it up for questions and Q and A in case any of you have any questions. So here are some of the things you can do with BuildShip. First of all, you can connect a bunch of nodes together to create your APIs and schedule jobs and backend tasks. We have a library of pre-built nodes that you can use, but if you don't find anything, you can easily ask AI to generate one and you can build from this. I'll actually jump into BuildShip dashboard to show you how that looks like. Let's first actually add a trigger. You can add a trigger for doing an API call. It can be a get post or any of those request types or even a, a scheduled job that runs at a specific time of the day. So for here, I'm just adding an API call and let me get rid of this node for now. So here, as you can see, you can pick up any of these options. So let's just stick to get for now. And as I was telling, you can generate a node with AI. So let me say, for example, generate a random number be between given two numbers. So essentially, it'll use this prompt that you have to generate the node logic. And what you can actually do is you can also actually use any one of these um, nodes that we have available. Say, suppose you want to connect it to Firestore and do certain CRUD operations, or maybe you want to connect to uh, SendGrid, send some emails, or use Postgres to connect and get some data from there if your database is on Postgres. So essentially, there are a lot of these nodes that you can check out, but as I was telling you can actually generate with AI. So while we were talking, this node got generated. And the interesting thing here is you can simply specify the parameters that you mentioned. So between one and 100, and you can simply return that value that gets created. So here is a status code of 200 if it's successful, and you can pass in the value of the previous node. So you can essentially take node values from the previous or the one before and use that in these parameters here. So let's give this a try. Let's ship this. And you should get like a URL that is the API call. While that's happening, let's also look at a few other things. Here we have some templates. 
we have actually tons of templates for various use cases. We have here templates for Google Vision, building a WhatsApp bot, building a vector DB search from a JSON file so that you don't have to use complex vector databases that are out there. So essentially you can check out all of these and these come with complete workflow that you can build and try with. So let's go back to this. Let's see if this got endpoint code created. So yeah, as you can see, there's an endpoint here. Let me go here and test this out. And another thing actually, while that's running, I just want to quickly showcase one thing that I missed earlier, which is you can look at the code of each node. So if it's an AI generated node, or if it, even if it's one of our pre-built nodes, you can look at the actual code. It's in JavaScript and TypeScript. You can test it out in this test kind of environment, and you can make any modifications as you would want. Like if you want to return something else, if you want to add some hundred or something, you can do that and you can save that. So let's go back here. Yeah, as you can see, this came back with a number. You can pretty much keep trying this and you can keep giving other options. So that's kind of a basic, simple workflow building, how it looks like in BuildShip. Here are some other interesting examples. Here you can see we have actually, you know, not just one way to build, which is not just one flow. You can actually branch things. You can run things in parallel. So there are a lot of powerful nodes here that can let you build a realistic and powerful backend, not just like a simple send an email type of workflow. So let's look at this one, which uses Palm API for text generation. You can actually use any AI model, not just one specific type of text generation. So if you want to generate text with OpenAI, and then you want to do some kind of uh, re image generation with Replicate. You can basically combine AI models from different platforms into one place, uh, which we think is quite interesting. And as you can see, this node is also, you can look at the code, you can look at the various input and output parameters that are there. I can learn a bit more about it here. I deployed this earlier. So let's take a copy of this. Yeah, let's say something like, say hello in French. There you go. So it comes back with a reply. We have tons of other demos, but I don't want to keep talking here. So if case somebody has a question, we can dive into that first. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that demo, Harini. Folks, remember, you can drop all of your questions into the general channel. Am I, would it be rude of me? I think I might want to go first. If nobody has a question yet, I want, I don't want to be rude. So I want to give you all the chance, but maybe I'll go first if I may. And yeah, I'd love to know, how can I test an, a specific, an individual node? So to test a node, let's just test the same thing. So you can go into this editor mode, which is, you can think of one place for doing all things about that node, testing it out, making sure that node works fine before you move on to the next one. Here, you can enter the prompt here itself, right? You can, maybe we just leave the same one, okay. hello in French. You can tweak any of these parameters. So you can leave it as it is in default mode, or you can try out by tweaking any of these to make sure it works the way exactly you want it. You can tweak this code. And every time you do that, you can just click this test node button. And it takes a few seconds. It runs and gives you the output. So let's see what it comes back here with. One thing I want to actually highlight while that's running is these parameters that you see here, these are the ones which are coming up here. So say, suppose you take the base node from the node library, but you want to add more parameters to it because your business logic or your app needs it. You're able to easily do that. You can add a um, specific thing. You can specify the type of it, and maybe you want to add that as well. But just here, as you can see, this ran fine. You can see the output here itself. So if I scroll down a bit, let me actually copy this. Yeah, so here in the output, it said the same uh, bonjour. Yeah, that's how you test a node. Amazing. Thank you so much. I do have a question coming up here, and that is if I wanted to use private keys or API keys, how do I do that? And if I can, 
where are these stored? Yeah. Let me try to find a good example for this. Say, for example, we actually add OpenAI. Everybody's familiar with this. Let's add that. Say OpenAI chat. So here is, you see, we need to add the secret here, right? You can obviously add it as it is, but that's not secure. So what you need, we can actually do is go here to secrets and add your secret here and add the secret name and the secret value. And what this does is actually it stores in the Google Cloud's secret manager. So it's highly secure. It's not exposed in the front end in any way, and it's all handled by the back end. So that makes it super secure for you to use in further applications. Instead of using this key directly in your front end applications, you can build an API this way that potentially does on top of just calling the open AI chat, it does a bunch of things. Maybe it sanitizes the output, checks it in a specific format and returns it. And that makes it like a very highly secure backend API that you can use in your apps. Amazing. Got one last question here. I am here. And that is, right. So we had, we saw a little bit of the AI generation. Looks amazing. Want to know, how could I edit that note that got generated with AI? Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah. So actually, let's go back to this. That's a good point because sometimes you might have prompted it incorrectly because prompt engineering is its own topic, right? Like you might say something, but actually when you see the generated node, it might not be exactly what you wanted. So you can go and ask the AI again, hey, I need to modify it. I want to say add 100 to the generated number. Well, let's actually use some other thing because I previously tried to edit that. Let's generate that. So what it does is it uses the existing generated node, adds your layer of logic that you wanted to change on top, and it does that regeneration. And once it's done, you can actually see what it did in the code, right? And then once it actually gets generated, there are two ways to edit. So one is this AI way where you can keep re-editing, but the second way is you can go here and look at the logic and change it. So as you can see, it added 500 here. But if you want to do directly some code changes, you can do that as well. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. I have a question for somebody who might have joined a little bit later. This looks really cool and I'm really excited to try it. How do I get started? What do I do? So yeah, right now we are in private beta. So you just need to go to our website here. Uh, click early access or open the app. It'll just ask you to log in and fill a very short form with your exactly what are you trying to build. And then we'll approve that uh, very soon after based on that. We're trying to empower as many realistic use cases as possible right now. And soon we will be launching in private public beta as well. Awesome. And we have a question. How... How do you charge for these kind of actions? You charge users for ex for using single nodes or another kind of tokens. How, so the question is, how does it look in? How does Buildship look in kind of costs in terms of costs, which you can see right here? Yeah, exactly. So you can look at the pricing page for complete details. But the way we charge is based on execution of a workflow end to end. It's not like task by task, right? So you get to build in different tiers. We have like a generous free tier where you can build five workflows. 2000 executions, you can go a bit more into details and read what it means. So that kind of comes in with uh, three hours of processing. So your workflows, uh, depending on how complex and how simple ones you build, each of the execution takes approximately usually five seconds or even less, right? You get tons of executions here. You, you can actually go way beyond this. We have seen in three hours, you can even get to 4,000, 5,000 workflow processing, depending on what you build. We have other kind of add-ons as well. So you get different storage for different tiers. We have AI generated nodes in tiers as well, but in the pre paid plans, you can add on more. Say, suppose you exhausted all the ones in your existing plan, you can keep adding more ones as you need. Awesome, thank you. Question for me, I didn't even, how, what does the roadmap look like for for build ship. Right now, as I said, we are in private beta. We are keenly listening to all our users and trying to make the product really good and amazing experience for you all. First things is obviously we are beefing up the Nodeverse ecosystem to add tons of other nodes that would be super meaningful for you. 
including adding nodes that would be a direct connection to your different kind of apps, third-party integrations that you would like. So for example, if you're integrating with Superbase and you want to just do OAuth-based authentication and not have to like copy-paste different kind of URLs and keys and tokens and so on, you can just one-click log in and get connected in the right in the trigger node or if you want to connect to different front-end applications, we are actually doing an integration with Bravo Studio. So that's also going to be very interesting. So you want to make the process of you connecting to different tools and databases and all that super easy. So that'll be like one click experience. So that's in the roadmap as well. And we are also adding a couple of core nodes that will also let you build more powerful APIs and scheduled jobs and backend tasks, including one of the templates we're going to look at is the parallel GPT that we previously launched in the Roy's table kind of user interface, but it actually makes much more sense in the workflow style. So you'll be able to even just upload a CSV file uh, and run through all the rows of data to do uh, API call to different a APIs like OpenAI one and so on. So those are some of the things in our roadmap, but we will actually love to hear from the users as well. So as you try the product, uh, and if you have any kind of things that are missing or uh, a specific thing that you're trying to build and unable to build, please feel free to drop us a message or on Discord or just email us. We actually have a support form here that you can fill out to ask for questions or issues or other things. So feel free to use that and we'll get back to you and we're trying to build things that will be super valuable for you. Amazing. Thank you. Got another question from Pavel. Is Roy development going to be discontinued? No. So we want to build like a platform and ecosystem for complete low code backend development space, make it super easy for you. So if you have your own Firebase project and Google Cloud project, and you want to build on top of it and you want to manage the data, so Roy will continue to be there. We are actually launching a lot of interesting new features next week as well for Roy. So watch out for that. So things like ability to do bulk operations, multiple filters. It's already actually in our open source branch if you want to check it out, but we will be pushing that out to Roe app by next week. So very much we are continuing the development for that as well. So yeah, Roe is not going anywhere. Great to know. I will also canonize that in the general channel. Cool. So I think we've covered everything. I just want to say, Arini, thank you so much for taking the time. Friends here, thank you so much for joining in. What's next? Let me tell you, this uh, Office Hours Q&A live stream is going to happen every week at this time. So keep an eye out. We're also going to be making product updates. We're going to offer out one-on-one -on -one sessions for you to give us feedback on BuildChip, where we'll be giving out links to all of that good stuff. Remember... Go to buildchip.com to request private beta access. For next week, we're going to have an up to kick off the open beta. So just stay tuned here on Discord. But until then, just want to wish you all the most amazing rest of your day. And once again, thanks for joining.